Bristol Community College, Mathematics with Dan Avedikian, Math 119, Fundamental Statistics, Section 9.2, Problem 6. This is Section 9.2, Problem Number 6. It says a random sample of 36 BCC students had an average age of 26.2 years old with a sample standard deviation of 2.4 years find a 90% confidence interval for the average age of all BCC students. So, because this is a confidence interval, we use the confidence interval formula, and we're going to use the version where we do not know the population standard deviation. So we put an S for the standard deviation, not sigma, and our confidence coefficient is T sub C, not Z sub C. That's what you would use if you know the population standard deviation. We only know the standard deviation of the sample. So, now as we fill this in, the X bar stands for the sample mean, which it says the average of our sample is 26.2 years old. Then plus or minus S, the sample standard deviation, which is 2.4 years. Again, the question tells us that. And that's going to be divided by the square root of N. N is the size of the sample, which is 36. And now T sub C is the confidence coefficient. Now to find the confidence coefficient, you need to use the student's T distribution, which is attached to the end of the homework. And you have to find where the correct column and correct row intersect with each other, and that will give you a value of your confidence coefficient. So the correct column is determined by doing 1 minus the confidence interval written as a decimal. So 1 minus the confidence level as a decimal divided by 2. So 1 minus the confidence level as a decimal is 1 minus 0.90. Well, 0.9 if you want. You don't need the zero in the end. You still have to divide it by 2. 1 minus 0.90 is 0.10. Still divided by 2. Again, you can make it 0.1 if you want, but I think of it as 0.10. And 0.10 divided by 2 is 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 is the column heading that you want to look for. And as you look down that column, you want to find the correct row. The row to look into for the chart is based on the sample size. And it's the sample size minus 1. That will tell you how many degrees of freedom. The far left is labeled DF for degrees of freedom. So our degrees of freedom would be 1 less than 36, so 35 degrees of freedom. So I'll see where the row for 35 degrees of freedom intersects with the column that's labeled 0 0.05. And they intersect at 1.690. And if you want, you can also call that 1.69. But the chart writes everything to three places after the decimal. So I'll, I'll call it 1.690. So that goes in for T sub C, our confidence coefficient. And now the formula has been filled out. So what we need to do now is we, we do the math. So again, this is the point at which you want to be careful. The math is easy if you have a calculator. It's filling in the formula that's a more common source of errors. Once you fill it in, if you're careful, most likely you'll get the right answer. But filling in the different parts, that's a more likely spot to make a mistake. Once we start the math, we have to take care of the square root first. Square root of 36 is the first thing I need to deal with. So I'll leave the 26.2 for now. Plus or minus the 2.4 in the numerator will stay for now. But square root of 36 is 6, because 6 times 6 is 36. So I'll change the square root of 36 to a 6. And I'll leave the rest of it the way it is. The 1.690 at the end can stay 1.690. Now, what happens next is I can divide 2.4 divided by 6. So that'll be 26.2 plus or minus. I will briefly pretend that it's 24 over 6, which I know is 4. So since it's 2.4, I know it's 0.4 is the answer for 2.4 divided by 6. Or you could just do it on a calculator. So I have 26.2 plus or minus 0.4 times 1.690. So now I can go ahead and multiply 0.4 times 1.690. And that will give me 26.2 plus or minus 0.676. So that 676 is what you would call the margin of error. And when, once we get to the point where we just have one number value after the plus and minus, 
that's where we can split it into a separate minus and a separate plus. The, the branch with the minus will give me the low end of my confidence interval, and the branch with the plus will give me the upper end of my confidence interval. So my confidence interval is going to go from 26.2 minus 0.676 to the upper end will be 26.2, let's make a little bit of room, plus 0.676. And then you just do the math. So the low end, 26.2 minus 0.676, will be 25.542. And the upper end, if I add 26.2 plus 0.676, will be 26.876. So that means that I am 90% sure that 25. 542 to 26.876 is an interval that contains the true average age of all BCC students, which is thousands and thousands. We have typically 10, 12,000 full-time enrolled per year. So I, I'm pretty sure, based on only a sample of 36 students, 